Good morning, everybody. Alright, today is April 4th. Uh, what's that, thir Thursday? Yeah, Thursday the 4th of April. We are currently at the Loves in St. Charles, Minnesota. brakes release the way they did. It's like they were still grabbing even though I had the brakes released on the trailer. That's what it felt like. Okay. It is time to make our delivery now though. Uh, we're going to be going to the Kemp's Foods in Rochester, New uh, Minnesota. I keep wanting to say New York, but it's <laughs> no, it's Minnesota. Um... Alright, uh, you see on the map. Yeah, you see on the map where we're at in uh, relation to the Twin Cities area, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, not very far away, it's only about 25 miles from here. So I think I'll go ahead and start the video now. Uh, may or may not get uh, everything I want to talk about on this one. Uh, knocked out before we get there uh, if I do have time for you know, maybe if I get done fast enough uh, I might do a little bit of high speed there to kind of help shorten up the video for you guys but regardless if you're on YouTube at all you should be on here for story time shouldn't matter if my video is like 25 30 minutes long or 50 minutes long it's probably some some kind of good storytelling to be had there oh yeah um, so we'll start first with uh, when, uh, you know, you guys might have seen my last video, the Asperger's uh, related video, um, where I picked up a load at Linear Logistics, or also known as Henningsen Cold Storage in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And that'll be this same load here. We're going to go deliver it now. It's due at noon here in Rochester. Uh, my first time at this customer today. Uh, I have kind of an idea what to expect from the uh, from the past Google reviews, and uh, I already had a pre-planned route that I was looking at taking. You know, looking at the map previously. Um, it's a pretty simple route overall. Although I noticed on uh, my Helios onboard system. Uh, while it does look like it's going to the correct location, as far as I can tell, um, it also looked like it was going to want me to take a slightly different route than what I originally planned on. Um, so uh, that could be a good a good thing there. It might, uh, you know, it's a little bit more direct, but at the same time, the, the route I was planning on, which is basically US 52 all the way up to... Uh, Civic Center Drive or Civic Drive or whatever that street's called and then uh, basically head east from there and it's only like a block from there over to uh, the intersection that my customers buy so short distance uh, I, yeah, I did. the customer is in kind of a tricky spot regardless so it's I mean just looking at it on the map makes me think that any any of those streets could be truck legal or truck illegal I'm not really sure what uh, what to follow, so um, so I have my pre-plan on how I want to do the route or how I'm planning it all, just based on what I was seeing, what I uh, anticipate doing myself, and um, this thing usually does keep, tend to keep me on truck routes, so I, I am half tempted to go ahead and take the particular route it's taken. Actually, the street that it, was, it wants me to take from US 52 actually is one I was looking at like is that a truck route? Yeah. Looking on the map, but there's you know when there when I have experience working with maps and speaking of I used to be a map editor with on, uh, on Google and Waze. Did more, but more particularly Waze. So I have a stronger background in um, you know a lot of the like the road hierarchy and stuff you know, because of that experience that the average person is gonna have. Um, yeah, but that, that north-south road that's to the east of US 52, I was eyeballing that as uh, like, you know, that might be a truck route. 
I don't know for sure. I even looked online um, that it serves for Rochester, Minnesota truck routes. And I found one picture that uh, pretty much shows like US 52 as a valid truck route. I think it was another road over in the area. So I think the one that, that I'm going to take across after I'm off 90 to get to uh, well, where 52 kind of comes up. I think that one's also truck route, but I, I think maybe the road that this is telling me as well, but uh, other parts of it, I'm like, eh, I don't know. Uh, we're only 11 miles away from the 52 exit, by the way. All right, so I'm gonna kind of talk about a couple of things here, and they're gonna tie into each other a little bit here, right? So one would be kind of furthering the Asperger's thing. Uh, now, if you, I, I talked about the movie The Accountant in that last video, and in this one, I'm gonna talk also about that movie and how it. it in that movie, uh, Ben Affleck's character, that basically this, um, um, this Asperger's having uh, accountant who can do things uh, just like, you know, figure out, uh, he does like a, a forensic accounting uh, uh, issue there, basically, and uh, figures stuff out just overnight that the average person takes like weeks and, you know, maybe months to figure out. Now, anyway, yeah, that's probably, that's a little bit of Hollywoodization, but one thing that is kind of true on that uh, with Aspies is something that is mentioned a couple of times in, in, by his character. One, um, you know, when he has a, let's say, a, we, like to, we like to have puzzles to solve. And when we get our, when we get, it's like an addiction in a way. If we get fixated on wanting to finish the puzzle, We'll start. We'll throw fits when um, something stops us from doing it. So and it doesn't have to just be a puzzle. It could be something work-related that I'm doing. And maybe if I'm so into what I'm doing that you know every kind of little distraction that slows me down from it will start frustrating the hell out of me. Um, yeah, it just depends. Like you know, if I'm, if it's more the mood, I guess. It's not like an everyday thing that I'm like that. But yeah, a fair amount, I would say, it, it is the case. Um, that's why, like, you know, when, when I'm parked, when I'm not driving my truck, I don't want to be on the phone with people in general because that's my time to do other stuff that I cannot be doing while I'm driving my truck, like watching a movie or maybe watching a Dodger or Eagle game or something along that line or whatever. So, and socializing with people gets in the way of that. And speaking of that, that's where I also realize that I think that differ, uh, separates me from a, I guess I would neurotypical would be, you know, I have activities I like to do that people interfere with in general. I like to socialize. It's just like uh, Ben's character in that movie. He says, I, yeah, I, I, I like to socialize, but, uh, you know, um, there is an apprehension as well about how people are going to perceive me or... Um, you know, find, they might find me annoying or weird or an asshole or whatever that is off-putting to them. And so, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's at least true for me. Um, so, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I got a Rubik's cube. I got a 15 by 15 Rubik's cube here in the truck. It takes me about five to six hours to uh, solve it from this totally scramble. And. Um, yeah, that's one of those, once I get started, I don't want to put it down until I'm done with it. All right, anyway, uh, so the other thing there is I'm very numbers driven. Uh, some of you guys who, who used to watch my live streams would know that uh, my friend John Farber, who used to drive for us at uh, JCT, he used to regularly call me numbers. You know, it's just like that TV show numbers where the guy puts numbers into everything. It has some kind of a number association with everything. You know, or figures out math, uses math to figure stuff out. All right, I'm very much the same way. Great numbers driven. So, with that said, uh, I want to address a comment that was mentioned in that last video. Now, I'm going to preface it with the info that... This comment came from a person I consider a friend. 
Someone I used to, who I knew from my Sea of England days. That's how we first became acquainted. And, you know, he's got a lot more experience in, in trucking than I have. Uh, he's got, like, you know, uh, he's getting closer to 30 years of experience now, I believe, because I remember, I remember, yeah, he was at, I think he left Sierra England with like 24 years with them or something like that, and he just mentioned that he had been with that, this uh, the smaller company guy for four years now, so I guess he's got 28 years. Alright, anyway, I tend to have a problem with bullshit, or something I perceive as bullshit. Now, I'm not saying that it is bullshit, but I'm saying it's, hey, you might want to explain yourself, because, uh, or... Show some proof of some some type that uh, what you're saying is accurate because it sounds a little bit like bullshit based on what I've personally seen on the video footage of that uh, of that ship crashing into. Oh, that's nice, Swift. Let's scare the SUV driver. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's. I even have a, uh, a link to the video, uh, the, the bridge collapse video in question. Uh, basically, this you know, he says that he was going across the bridge and he felt that kind of a rumbling thing, whatever, and then stopped right after he got off the bridge and got out and looked and realized the bridge was gone. But he was on a load from Tampa to Boston. He was northbound and. If you guys know, if you guys have paid any attention to that incident, or even watched the video of the of it actually happening, you will see that they shut down traffic on the northbound side before they shut down the southbound side, and and the numbers don't add up. I you know I, again, the entire span of the bridge from one end to the other is 8,636 feet. How do I know it's out on the top of my head like this? Because I looked it up. And I memorize stuff like that. I told you I'm good at numbers. Photographic memory. Um, Alright, so... You can't clearly see when anybody's getting on the one end of the bridge or the other, but you can see when they're right at the midpoint of the bridge. Midpoint of the bridge, if 86, 36 is the entire length, then the midpoint would be 43... Uh, what, 17, 18 or so? Yeah, 43, 18 ish. So, um, and now because of my trucking background, I do have an interest also in converting miles an hour to feet per second. So, I just took a wild guess that, you know, the, the traffic on the bridge that you can see in that video is doing roughly 50 miles an hour. Perhaps a little slower, but, or, well, we'll say 50 as a ballpark. 50 miles an hour is 73 feet per second. 73 and a third feet per second. Now, if you divide the midpoint, uh, the the, the mid uh, length of the bridge by that distance, it's going to take about 59 seconds to get from the midpoint of the bridge to the end of it at that speed. Now, the last vehicle of any kind that I saw crossing that bridge was a southbound trucker. Uh, he got to the midpoint, uh, I believe in that video was 450-something, around the 450 or so marker on that video, and the bridge itself collapsed at about right at the 540. Now, the last northbound vehicle I saw crossing that bridge was at about the 151. So, in other words, it was almost three minutes. Now, this person said that the, uh, uh, they do 30 miles an hour across all bridges. Okay, like I had already figured out, like maybe you were doing 30, uh, in which case it would have taken, uh, it would have had, you would have had to been doing 25 to 30 miles an hour from the midpoint to still be on it when the bridge was struck. And, or at least when the bridge collapsed. And, and you know, but there was no northbound traffic at the time. The, um, you know, that truck crossed the midpoint around the, like I said, uh, I don't know, I think it was 350-ish point. The last northbound driver I saw at all was on the, I think it was a car, and that was right at the 151 mark in that video. So, yeah, um, 
two minutes and 50 or so seconds from there to when the bridge actually collapses. And it was on a truck, it was a car. Or it might have been the, the last truck that I, yo, no, never mind. The last truck I saw going northbound was at the 151. I think the last car was like 220 or something, 221, something along that line. Um, okay, here's my exit right here. Um, so either way, it's like, you know, it seems really suspicious to me. Now, even if you're going 30 miles an hour, the last truck across that bridge, eh, I don't know, that, that could have been him. But at the same time, I, 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 I might be jumbling up my facts, too. Um, I have to look at that video again, but either way, it's it just, I mean, I, you know, I want to believe that he's say, telling me the truth because this is a driver who, shut up, there's nothing I collide with here. Um, he's never really had a propensity for telling bullshit. So, I'm going to give him that benefit of doubt. However, it's just like, well, the math doesn't seem to be adding up. What's not at, uh, but what am I missing here? You know, and uh, Charles, I'm going to say, uh, I'm not trying to call you a bullshitter, but uh, yeah, I don't know you that well, and I'm naturally inclined to, you know, after so many years of my childhood being on the gullible and naive side, and learning years later, you know, and don't trust anybody. Never, especially uh, don't you know, when you're a veteran. You know when you get people busting your balls about uh, this or that bullshit story a lot. You know, you know, or just storytelling, whatever. Maybe just for and there's you know, there's different reasons why people will bullshit. Someone it might just be like a Scotty D. Uh, <coughs> Scotty D. Type. Now Scotty D. Isn't a pathological bullshit. But you guys who know me and know him, you, know, you guys who know me through him, whatever, you know that a lot of times he'll tell bullshit, but he's not doing it to try to make you believe it. He only says it to uh, to see who's actually paying attention, who will catch his uh, catch what he's saying. And if nobody catches on, or the, or the joke flies over their head, he'll actually let you know, hey, I'm just messing around with you, and, uh, you know, or something along that line. He never tries to uh, really make you believe that what he's telling you is true. So that's one type of bullshitter. Yeah, I'm okay with that kind. And you know, once I know that that's a person's sense of, uh, that's their form, their form of humor, I'm okay with it. You know, give me a link or something else along that line to, um, to, to, uh, to indicate that you know, if, you, if we're in person, uh, if I don't know you so well, that hey, I'm just screwing, I'm just screwing around to just uh, just get a rise out of him. Uh, like my brother-in-law and my dad. My brother-in-law will, uh, will say a lot of uh, crazy stuff to my dad just to piss him off, uh, just to get a rise out of him. It's just for entertainment. He's not, he knows he's, uh, he's just selling bullshit. He knows, uh, and everybody else knows he's selling bullshit, but it gets my dad to react to it a lot. So, <laughs> um, so there is that. And there, you know, there are other types of bullshitters, though, that... Uh, Sorry, you're giving me reason to not trust you and giving me a reason to not respect you either. And I don't know where Charles fits into that mold. Um, like I say, I never took him for a bullshitter in the past. He's never been one to give me reason to not trust what he says. Um, he's, he's always struck me as a very nice and genuine guy. So I'm going to give him that. But, like I say, it's just... And I don't know if that truck was him at the 151 mark in that video or or if he was just... I, so I even asked in the comment section, uh, you now these numbers aren't adding up or you, or you just busting my chops kind of thing that just kind of screwballing around with me. And then he got mad and uh, basically uh, got mad at me for calling him a liar and even threatened to unsubscribe. And it's like, you know, like I said, Charles is a good guy. Uh, if if I'm mistaken, and that maybe that truck in the 151 it was really him, and he really was doing 30 or so, which um, that would possibly put the timeline right or in the neighborhood. But um, I don't know. I'd say the truck was really doing 30 miles an hour. It looked like it might be going a little bit faster. I don't know. There is a way I can do the math to figure that out, though, too. 
because we know the span on that bridge uh, from the pillar to pillar is 1,200 feet, and I can time how many um, how many uh, seconds and frames it takes to cross that span by that truck, and that's going to tell me how fast they were going. So it did. I'm going to look this kind of stuff up, and you guys saw my video of that uh, that Barstow vehicle versus pedestrian incident again. Numbers when people make claims and the numbers don't add up. I call it as I see it. If it looks like bullshit, smells like bullshit, I'm calling it bullshit. Whether you're just being funny about it or not, or or maybe there's just information missing that I need to um, to give me a reason to believe you're just yeah that you're being genuine. So I say you could be telling the truth. I don't know, but I will say uh, there are people out here. Now this turn right here is uh, where the the, the Onboard nav wants me to go. I was thinking about staying on 52 all the way up to Civic, but I'm gonna go ahead and go this side because I know I do want to go to the the east side of the facility to get to it. And you can see how the road uh, kind of goes straight. See, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the the fact that it looks like it goes through some neighborhoods and stuff. Or, well, it's a, it's a through road, but it also looks like neighborhoods are nearby. So generally, it's one of the things I try to avoid doing when I'm uh, driving a truck. If I don't need to be in their neighborhood, I try to avoid them. Um, we'll just look, keep an eye out for any truck restriction signs. I do. I do remember seeing the, there was somebody in the Google reviews on this place saying that there are a lot of weight restricted roads in the area. So, if you want to watch out for that. All right. So, again, Charles. Out again. If you're if you're telling the truth, I apologize, but I'm not going to just willingly believe what you have to say unless maybe you have something to corroborate it. Like, hey, give me, show me a shot of your uh, your logs that shows that you were on that particular route and um, you were likely to be in that same area at that same time uh, and on that same date and time as that incident. Then it uh, it makes it a lot more. It'll make it more believable. But you know when. When everybody and I looked at the street view of that bridge and the speed limit's 55, and the last northbound truck I saw was going about the same speed as the cars that were behind it. So again, I, it just seems questionable. So I'm gonna say, yeah, if you, uh, you know, give me something more to work with there, and yeah, I'll I'll, I'll right, be right up front and apologize to you for calling, you know, for suggesting you might be a liar, but. If I, if I get more reason to believe that you're just telling me bullshit stories like that idiot in Romeoville, Illinois, uh, when I vlogged about him claiming to have military service when he didn't, come on, dude. You got green light. Uh, then I'm going to say go ahead and unsubscribe because I have zero respect for people who do that shit. I can't stand deceptive people. Um, and I, I won't lose any sleep at all about you unsubscribing if I, if I have reason to think you really are bullshitting with me. Uh, I even consider maybe you got some medical thing going on that's causing you to really believe that happened or something when it didn't. I, I don't know. Um, so, I, like I said, I, this is another thing that with the aspirators too is, you know, I, like I said, I like, I'm sociable, but at the same time, uh, don't bullshit with me. I won't, I don't tolerate bullshit. Uh, 3rd Avenue, truck access, right lane only. Yeah, but I'm not trying to go to Walmart, so. Ah, uh, let's keep watching for truck restriction signs. I don't see anything yet. I see some no parking signs, but that's about it. I mean, it, does, it looks like commercial and um, stuff here, so that's good. But... It looks like after we get past that other highway there, it looks like we might start. I mean, there's a possibility it could be. Oh yeah, here's a truck route sign straight in, uh, straight ahead right here in front of us. All right, good. All right, we're gonna make a right turn on the Fourth Street Southeast. Uh, I think, which one was it? There's one. I think is that the one that's just north of the customer or just south of it? I can't remember. I looked it up. I know we're going to want to park on 1st Street and then check in at the office there. And um, if I understand correctly, the dock doors are on the north side of the, on the south side. 
Uh, well, there are some dock doors on the south side of the facility, but you can also clearly see on the satellite or street view that there are some dock doors on the northeast side of the lot too. All right, truck route in every direction from here. It's 16th Street, southeast and southwest. Come on, dude. We're in a 40 zone. You don't have to do 34. Alright, uh, especially when there's nobody in front of you to, to cause you to do that. Uh. Alright, still got a little over a mile to go. We'll go ahead and uh, maybe speed it up just a little bit here for you guys. Spider-Man shirt, uh, sweater, or whatever, or woman. Nope. All right. I designed on the back of that sweater. <laughs> I thought that might have been like a Spider-Man logo or something, but no, I think it was just something else that kind of resembled it. It's not a bad-looking uh, downtown area here. It's a uh, decent number of uh, decent-sized buildings here. I did not expect. Rochester, Minnesota to be uh, big enough to even have buildings this size. Yeah, so all these lights here are more reason why uh, I think I would really prefer to take the US 52 route up to Civic because when I looked at it, it looked like it was uh, limited access with on ramps and off ramps all the way up to Civic. And then it was a, it would be a, look like an easier trip across Civic to get up to where Civic and this road here meet up. So, but when we get up here, when I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and look uh, when we get up to Civic, because I'm going to cross Civic, and I'm going I'm to basically circle around from the north end of the customer. Uh, this is actually want me to turn on second, which is right here. Why? Uh, oh, okay, I kind of see why it wants me to go that way, but... I'll say the light wasn't red yet. Uh, there was a pedestrian. There were pedestrians there getting rid of cross, but... Okay, yeah, but I'm going to look at Civic when we get up here. I'm going to look for any truck restriction signs as I'm passing by, and then, uh, we'll, yeah, I'm going to use 6th Street Northeast and circle in from there. Oh, yeah, that's really helpful when you wait till the last second to turn your left turn signal on, dipshit. Fucking woman sitting there waiting for your ass forever, thinking that you're gonna go through because you aren't signaling anything. Then you wait till <clears throat> you're already at the limit line to freaking hit your left turn signal. Ah, what are we driving so slow for? Are you gonna turn here? Tell me you're gonna turn. Come on, come on, move it, dude. You really don't have to do it. Seriously, it's. What are you doing, dude? You have to go less than 10 miles an hour to figure out that you want to turn there? <laughs> Holy shit, man. It's not that hard. Turn the street and roll to the right. <laughs> ah, okay, this is Civic right here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there is a truck route sign right there. So uh, I know for sure we can take that way back out of here now. I can also at the end of the video I'm gonna go that way and that way you guys can if you if anyone uh, is delivering here and you want to know what the, the two different routes are like um, yeah you can you can use both ends of the video to, uh, to see what the 
which way is actually better. I suspect the Civic Drive over to uh, uh, to 52 would be the better route, though. All right, that's the 7th, the next street up. Oh, shit, I overshot. I got so fixated that I missed my turn. Um, I'm not going down that driveway. I see a truck sign right here, a truck route uh, straight or right. But it's at the traffic light. I want to turn here, but no, truck's prohibited. So, yeah, and it doesn't look like a turn I want to try to make either. I can just circle back up. Actually, this is fine because right where 4th and uh, that, you see that little cul-de-sac there on the west end of 4th? Uh, right there is actually where trucks will stage while they're waiting for a dock door, so. Those will work just fine. Not really what I planned on, but it'll work. All right, more truck route signs. It's always a uh, it's always a probably nice thing to see. Got a Canada goose there. No, it's not a duck. It's a Canada goose. That's what actually brought down an AWACS uh, E3 AWACS jet, and uh, when I was in basic training, 1994, 95. All right, this is fourth right here. So yeah, I'll make this right turn. Trucks prohibited. I have to be here. This is where my customer is at. And see so you have this drop area right here. Okay, I see a sign for shipping and receiving right here. Uh, receiving on the other end. Um, uh, let me go ahead and come... Can I park right here in, in between these two trailers? Thought about asking that guy. I, mean, I don't know if this guy's a local here. I don't know if we're... What's this guy doing? Alright, I was looking to see if he was getting back in his truck or whatever, but... I don't like that position there. I'd rather be... I don't want to come in at too hard an angle, but... I'm going to at least get closer, so... Let me reposition. Um... I'd rather the trailer go in uh, where I can actually see the. I'd rather see the front end of that other trailer. That way, I can have a more squared up view of uh, of the spot I'm looking for. Might be a little bit early. Uh, might be a little off. I don't know. Let me square up and see what I'm looking at here. Oh yeah, I got plenty of room there. That's what, that was my main concern. I don't want to. I, I couldn't tell how good the angle is between these trailers, and didn't want to get too close to the. Ah shit. power steering because uh, sometimes it acts a little funny so when I want to steer I don't get the power steering that I'm expecting to get and sometimes it gives me a uh, weird steering response. guys we'll figure out now where we're going to because I know there was a sign going uh, pointing toward the north end of the facility or in that direction for receiving shipping is on this side here all right guys uh, we are checked in now the way it works actually this hole right here by where I was setting up my backing 
um, that's where our dock door is at. But now there's a door, there's a personnel door there with the buzzer button that you hit to get someone to, to come over. But now I, re, I I went by the signs that said shipping on this side, receiving on the other side. So I walked over to the other end and followed the receiving uh, uh, receiving uh, signs, whatever, to the other end there. Uh, it's right next to two dock doors over there. And walked inside, and then uh, right in front of a door there, there's a wall. Now that has, or actually the the door, uh, actually the door with the phone number. Uh, the door to go into the warehouse. They have uh, um, three phone numbers listed on it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna square up. I talked to uh, the guy. Just said line up with the door. I don't. I didn't know if he wanted me to open my doors or leave them shut for now, but um, the, the spotter over here, I talked to him a second ago and said usually they, uh, you know, they'll go ahead and they'll probably unseal me themselves when, they, when they're ready for me. So we'll just get squared up first. We'll get my towns where I need to be and then we're going to come right back out over here by where this... Uh, that freaking whatever that thing is over there that, that little bulldozer thing yeah we'll be up here so we're out of the way so employees can move uh, can pull in and out of their uh, parking area and whenever they're ready for me though oh, there's someone coming out now that guy's just out there having a smoke or if he's waiting for me so I wanted to see if he gestures or anything like that <sighs> oh, alright guys we are ready to dock in now a guy came out I gave my paperwork he uh, checked uh, I just told him it was sealed and said go ahead and dock in Come back out when we're ready. Alright, so I need to get my tandems a little bit more over in that direction to square up with the door. That should be in the ballpark. It's hard to tell, but I think. Yeah, it looks pretty close there. Alright, hard to tell how close I am to hitting it now. So. Alright, now I think, yeah, I, I think I see my shadow down, down there at the bottom that gives me kind of a clue how close I am to hitting it. Oh. Truck wants to try to surge a little bit faster than I want it to. Oh yeah, yeah, I was right on the money with what I was guessing there, but from the uh, from the shadow, hit it real nice and soft, like uh, just like I was hoping for. Okay, um, we don't. We only have. Um, I think it was twelve or no. 16 pallets or something along that line somewhere in the teens I don't remember the exact count I want to say 16 and I can hold 26 to 28 pallets so um, it's not a full load um, hopefully it won't take too long here wouldn't be surprised if it does though that's um, the more line items that are going to be on the load the the more time use is expected to take for them to sort everything out and you know split everything up into different pallets and you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's actually process to it when you uh, when you deliver. All right, well, uh, we'll press on again on the way out of here. Drive for JCT. Yeah, it's kind of Hirschbach, but because 
they acquired us a couple of years ago. I'll just write JCT. I got on hooky yet, so just sit tight. Okay. Guys, we are already unloaded. Uh, it's it's twelve thirty right now, local time. Oh, so we're only in the dock door for about half an hour. Pretty quick. All right, let me come uh, come out here, and we'll get our doors shut, and we'll head out of here, and let you know what we're doing next. guys we are ready to head out of here now um, all right so what are we doing next um, I do have a pre-plan for a reload it doesn't pick up until tomorrow uh, but it picks up in Albert Lee Minnesota which is just uh, 50 miles west of here uh, there is a uh, actually there's a loves and a Petro right there in town uh, now, I noticed when I was picking up this load that I just delivered that uh, the very back, um, you know, rivet, whatever, uh, it attaches the, uh, the, the, uh, the chute, yeah, the, that the reefer actually blows air through. Uh, the very last one on the left, well, on the right side chute, but the left side of it, you know, yeah, I'm waiting on this car to go by just in case I need their lane. Um, Oh shit! Great. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, I want to turn on Civic, which should be this street right here. Uh, this is this isn't truck restricted, is it? It's a right turn pocket that I. Yeah, that's a truck route. Says so truck route. Uh, that's a sign saying truck route right there. Okay. Uh, all right, so you see on my map, that's where Albert Lee is at, straight to the south from um, Twin Cities. Right where I-90 and I-35 meet up. Uh, just south of where that interchange is at is where the truck stops are at. I'm gonna go get that chute repaired. I also noticed that I got a trailer tire that has some flat spots on it. I also got to need to get a washout somewhere, so I'll figure that one. I forgot to look that, uh, figure that part out, but that's what's going on next. I uh, will definitely be uh, vlogging that one for you guys as well. Uh, that'll probably be starting from one of the two, one of those truck stops over there, though. All right. Um, I hope you guys. Uh, yeah, I don't. I didn't have any issues with anybody here, by the way. Um, didn't take that long at all, really. I said 11, I don't know. Uh, no, it was actually a noon appointment time, and I was, uh, they were coming out to dock me in at right around noon, and only half an hour later, I'm done, so no complaints at all. All right, so yeah, just be aware if, you, uh, if you're coming in the area, there are truck restricted roads, but it's not, I wouldn't call it incredibly difficult to get to the where you need to be, though, so. All right. Um, otherwise, I hope uh, that's all. I, uh, that's all I got for today. We'll see you guys in Albert Lee uh, on the next one. All right. Peace.